Hello FPL managers, today we have a look at the updated draft team selection coming into the brand new FPL season. In today's video, we review some big changes that have been made to the squad coming to Gamic 1 in light of new FPL transfers. If you guys want to get the upper hand this process, then use the top link in the description to get yourself 65% off Fantasy Football Fix Premium and also get yourselves a free strategy guide. So just before we get into the video, don't forget to like and subscribe to show support for the channel. And once again, click the notification bell so you guys don't miss any future uploads. And with that being said, let's get into the video. So having a look at this squad, the two keepers remain the same of Sanchez and Foster. I feel like these two keepers are the best value for their respective prices at 4.5 and 4 million. Foster is actually the second highest owned keeper behind Martinez, and then Sanchez is the third highest owned keeper with a 23.2% ownership. I just think Sanchez at 4.5 million should be one of the highest scoring keepers after the first four weeks, with Burnley, Watford, Everton and Brentford as their first four matches. He did average one clean sheet every three games last year, Sanchez, so if he can recreate these numbers this year, then you definitely would expect him to do quite well. Having a look at the defenders, starting off with Trent Alexander-Arnold. At 7.5 mil with a 28.6% ownership, I think he is an essential option to have in the squads this year, especially with Liverpool's great starting fixtures. They face Norwich, Burnley, Chelsea and Leeds as their first four, plus Alexander Arnold offers great attacking potential as well and he should be on free kicks and corners, so he is definitely looking likely to be one of the high scoring defenders once again this year. Also with the return of Gomez, Van Dijk and Matip to Liverpool training pre-season, you definitely would expect them to get a lot more clean sheets this year. Moving on to Luca Dean, he is coming in at 5.5 million pounds with a 23% ownership. He is also one of the highest owned defenders in the game and it is clear to see why as he has seen a half million pound price drop and Everton's fixtures to start the year are very promising. They face Southampton, Leeds, Brighton and Burnley as their first four matches with no matches there with an FD rating of over 3. Dean did get himself 9 assists and 9 clean sheets last year as he did have one of the highest expected assists amongst defenders. Whilst Everton's defence isn't the most strong for clean sheets, he definitely offers great attacking potential. He also should be on corners as well from one side with Hammers taking corners from the other side, so for that reason he is a great option. And to cap off these starting defenders it is Vladimir Sufal. And moving on to the third starting defender it is Vladimir Sufal coming in at 5 million pounds. He did get himself 9 assists and 9 clean sheets last year, and with just a 15.2% ownership, he could be a nice mid owned defender. Also with West Ham's great fixtures of Newcastle, Leicester, Crystal Palace and Southampton, you definitely would expect West Ham to get a fair few clean sheets to start this year's campaign. And having a look at the bench defenders, we have gone with Luke Shaw at 5.5 million. I definitely think he'll be one of the highest scoring defenders this year, and he is currently the top owned defender in the game. Coming off a great Euros, and also getting himself 1 goal, 5 assists, and 10 clean sheets last Premier League season, he looks to be one of the best options considering his price. United also have some very promising starting fixtures as well, with Leeds at home in the first week, this is a slightly tricky fixture as I would expect Leeds to score, so that's why he has gone on the bench. But after that they do have a nice little fixture run, so I definitely will be starting him for those next 3 matches, as I would expect him to provide nice attacking returns as well. And as the 5th defender, we have gone with Omar Madala, who is coming in at 4 million pounds. According to Fantasy Football Fix, he has got a 100% chance of starting, which is obviously incredibly good value at just 4 million to get a starting player. So, despite Norwich's very difficult starting fixtures with Liverpool faced in the first game week, if you can get any £4 million player that does start for their team, then they have such good value and that is exactly what Omar Bamadele is. Now moving on to the lads in the middle of the park, starting off with Jack Harrison. Harrison is coming in at £6 million and he is half a million pounds cheaper than his teammate in Rafinha. Harrison has a projected points of 21.8 across the first 6 weeks by Fantasy Football Fix, which actually ranks 8th amongst mid-price midfielders. He is projected to get around 2 points more than Rafinha across the first 6 matches, and considering that he only has a 5.5% ownership, compared to Rafinha being one of the top owned midfielders, I definitely think he could be a nice differential punt. Obviously Leeds have a very tricky batch of starting fixtures, where they face Manchester United, Everton, Burnley and Liverpool as their first 4, but they do tend to score more goals against the better teams, as they do have a nice counter attacking structure, so I think Harrison could be a nice option, as he is also on corners as well. And moving on to another 6 million pound midfielder, it is Ismail Assar. Saar actually has the highest projected points for mid-price midfielders with 22.6 points he's projected to get in the first 6 weeks. Obviously at £6 million, this is incredibly good value, and with Watford's nice starting fixtures of Villa, Brighton, Spurs and Wolves, he could definitely make a nice start. Saar was very involved for Watford last year, and he seemed to be one of the spearheads of their attack, so with a nice run of starting fixtures, he could be a good short-term option. Moving on to Mo Salah, he is coming in at £12.5 million, and is one of the most obvious picks with a 48.9% ownership. 
Salah is the top end midfielder in FPL and it is clear to see why as he was one of the top scoring players last year, getting himself a very impressive 231 points. He is one of the most consistent performers in FPL and with Liverpool's great fixtures of Norwich, Burnley, Chelsea and Leeds to start and then some good fixtures after that as well, he would definitely be one of the top scoring players to start the year. Despite a half a million pound price increase, Salah is such a consistent performer and it's impossible to go without him. And moving on to the second premium midfielder, it is Sadio Mane. Mane is coming in at half a million pounds cheaper than the most seller at 12 million and only has a 3.7% ownership. Fantasy Football Fix does predict Sadio Mane to be the second highest scoring player after the first six weeks, with the projected points of 37.2. This is actually only 1.2 behind Mo Salah, and I definitely think with Liverpool's great fixtures, Mane would definitely make a nice start as well. He did underperform his XG last year, which was sitting at 14.45, which is actually one of the top four midfielders. Speaking of of Mane got himself 11 goals and 11 assists last year and I definitely think he can see improvements in both these departments for the new campaign. He has been performing very well in the preseason for Liverpool as he has got himself a fair few score involvements and is looking dangerous in general. So I think for the short term he could be a nice differential alternative to the likes of Bruno Fernandes as I think Mane could get himself more points in the short term. And as the fifth midfielder it is Yves Basuma who is sitting on the bench at 4.5 million. I was tossing up who to go for as the 4.5 million pound midfielder but I do think Basuma Suma looks to be the best value as he did get himself 77 points last year. He is of course very nailed on as he got himself over 3,000 minutes last year and he also got himself a goal to his name. And now moving on to the three forwards up top, starting with Ivan Tony. Tony is coming in at a very nice 6.5 million pounds with a 30.4% ownership. We all know how prolific he was in the EFL last year, getting himself over 30 goals in one season, which is very impressive. And with Brentford's nice starting fixtures of Arsenal, Palace, Villa and Brighton, he could be a nice striker option in the short term. He is obviously the spearhead of that Brentford attack, and he is projected 19.7 points in the first six matches, which is fairly decent for his price tag. Moving on, it is a big new change to the squad where we have brought in Danny Ings. Danny Ings is coming in at 8 million pounds and has come into the squad instead of Ollie Watkins, as I would expect Watkins to play out wide and left wing as Ings should come into striker. Also, he should be taking penalties off Ollie Watkins, which makes him all the more tempting as well. He will be getting plenty of service from his Aston Villa teammates in Bailey, Brendia and Watkins, and being the lethal finisher that he is, I would expect him to one of the top points getters this year. With Watford at Newcastle and Brentford as the first three matches for Aston Villa, you definitely would expect him to be a great option in the short term, and I think at £8 million he is definitely worth the money. His ownership has seen a 6% increase in the last two days, as many managers are scrambling to get him into the squads, as he definitely should be a nice attacking option. And to cap off the team, it is Mikel Antonio. Coming in at £7.5 million with a 14.9% ownership, he had the highest XG per 90 last year at 0.64, tied with Harry Kane. And with West Ham's great fixtures on Newcastle, Leicester, Palace and Southampton, he is a very nice short term option if he can stay fit. So that means this squad value is coming in at £99 million, which does mean we have £1 million in the bank. I am thinking of using the million to upgrade Ivan Tony to a £7.5 million striker such as the likes of Callum Wilson, but we'll have to see how it goes in the upcoming days. So that's all we've got for today for the updated draft team selection coming to Gamicon at the new FPL season. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a like and subscribe to show support for the channel. And once again, click the notification bell down below so you guys don't miss any future uploads. Also, leave a comment what you guys thought of this team selection and drop your teams in the comments down below as I'll be sure to reply. With that being said, I'll see you guys in the next one.